One of the new features of the PSAT reading, the redesigned PSAT reading, are these graph questions, where they're going to provide a graph or a chart or figure of some kind, and you have to answer questions based on it. Now, in some of these questions, the question is integrated with the passage such that you have to like read the graph and the question and the part of the passage that's relevant and find an answer that mixes them all together. On others, such as these two, basically has nothing to do with the passage at all. I mean, it's basically you read a graph and you answer questions on it. And so, yeah, you can you could do these without reading the passage. They're completely disconnected from it. And that's fine. That makes things easy. Uh, with graph questions, I generally leave these to the end. I like to do all the passage questions, just get that out of the way, and then do the graph questions. Unless the graph questions are really focused on a specific line in a passage or something, then I might do it. But it's always, I think, good to leave these to the end. And they happen to be typically at the end of the passages anyway, so it works out. So let's go ahead and check out these questions. So 18, which statement best summarizes the information presented in the graph? So let's go to the graph and summarize it ourselves and then see which choice best matches. So the title of the graph is global digital information created and shared. Always check the axes. On the x-axis, we've got the years. And in the, on the y-axis, we have digital information created and shared in zettabytes. And they tell us that a zettabyte is 1 trillion gigabytes. And if you know anything about computers, gigabytes are basically, you know, it's data, the amount of data. So this is the amount of data, you know, global digital information created and shared over these periods. Now notice they tell us that E is estimated. So these years, at the very least, are going to be estimated estimates, right? Because this was done in 2011. So at the very least, these three years are estimates. But what do we see? We see this constant increase, in fact, not constant increase, exponential increase in the amount of data created and shared over this period of time. So let's see what we've got in the choices. For A, far more people around the world own computers and cell phones today than 2005. So be careful. That might be in some sense implied because of the increase in data sharing. Maybe you'd say, well, the only way that's going to happen is if more people own computers and cell phones. Uh, maybe, but that's not 100% supported. It could be the case that the same amount of people or only a few more people own more computers and cell phones, it's just that we're using them more often. So you can't guarantee that this increase is caused by more people owning computers and cell phones, so we can get rid of A. B, the number of people sharing digital information has tripled since 2005. Be very careful, you might look at 2005 and say like, oh, I don't know, the, the, the bars have more than tripled compared to the 2005, so would that be B? But notice what the B says, it says the number of people has tripled. This is not number of people, this is data. This has nothing to say about number of people. So we can get rid of B. C, the volume of digital information created and shared has increased tremendously in recent years. Yeah, seems reasonable, right? We started here and you can see it's exploding at an exponential rate. Yeah, C seems reasonable. Notice it's talking about digital information, which is what the graph is, is showing. And it's also talking about it occurring over the years, which is also what the graph is showing. C is consistent with the graph. D, the amount of digital information created and shared is likely to be almost 8 zettabytes in 2015. Well, 2015 is the year, the last bar here, and it is pretty close to 8, so that seems reasonable. So the amount of digital information created and shared is likely to be almost 8 in 2015. I mean, that's true. That's what the, the, the chart shows. So you might say, well, how do I choose between C and D? And whenever you're stuck on a question, sometimes it's good to go back to the question, reread it, and see if you learn anything. Because in this case, when we do that, the question's asking which statement best summarizes the information. Does D summarize the information in the graph? No, it gives us a data point, but it doesn't summarize it. It doesn't give us a big picture, whereas C does. C tells us that over time, this data has increased uh, it, it, tremendously. So we're looking for the one that summarizes the info. That is choice C. Let's look at 19. According to the graph, which statement is true about the amount of digital information projected to be created and shared globally in 2012? So we're looking at this year right here, 2012. We want to know which is true about the info shared and created. Growth in digital information creation and sharing was projected to be wildly out of proportion 
to growth in 2011 and 2013. Well, not really. It's following the trend, like this exponential increase pretty well. It doesn't seem to be out of proportion to me. The amount of digital information created and shared was projected to begin a new upward trend. Be careful. It is on an upward trend, but is this a new upward trend? No, it's always been increasing. So let's get rid of B. The amount of digital information created and shared was projected to peak, not in 2012. It's going to continually increase through 2012. The amount of digital information created and shared was projected to pass two zettabytes for the first time. Well, here is the line for two zettabytes. And notice in 2012, we do pass that line for the first time. So D is consistent with what we see in the graph. So choice D. To learn more about Reason Prep's SAT, SAT subject test, and ACT video courses, go to reasonprep.com slash enroll, and you can find the link in the description below the video.